here's some inner workings of the memories or how the brain works. First of all, when we talk about subconscious, unconscious, these are synonyms to the word limbic system. The limbic system is your operating system of your whole life. Now, the limbic system is, is, is through your eyes, through your ears, through your sensations, senses. That means the whole world is written on the cells of our cortices by the five basic senses, and that's the unconscious, that's the subconscious, that's your limbic operating system. So our memories are based on survival system called the limbic system, called your subconscious and unconscious, super ed and all the others that people make up. This is super simple. And again, memories are are um, are uh, not permanent. Uh, they do change. Uh, there are people who have had strokes and head traumas that they forget who they are. They forget how to walk. They forget how to write. And their personalities do change because the memories were shaken loose or adjusted. So most people don't know this, that any time you visit a memory, when you recall a memory, your brain will pull it out of the file card of your brain. You'll feel and experience what is written on there. When you're finished visiting the memory, it will rewrite the memory and put it back. The key to understanding this is then when you're feeling depressed and down because something happened today. As you're feeling depressed and down, your mind goes, yeah, just like when you was five years old. All of a sudden, your brain pulls up the five-year-old memory. You're feeling bad now, and your brain will start adding that to the memory. And then when it stores it back, it's a new memory of an old experience. So now when you recall a memory, you're not recalling the original event. You're recalling the last rendition of the event. Memories are always rewritten and always change and adjusted. You could take a good memory and make it bad. You could take a bad memory and make it worse. And if you're really skilled and talented, and that's what I teach, you could take a bad memory and turn it into gold. And when we're done, our, our worst memories become our greatest allies and our greatest memories because it's no longer a pain. It's actually helped groom us to be an amazing person. So every time you visit a memory, the memory is drawn up from the last time you visit and the last adjustment you have on it, you'll add to it. And when your brain is done with it, it rewrites the memory. All right. First of all, another thing, memories are not real. Memories seem real because when you visit a memory, a good memory or a bad memory, even though you're sitting here in this chair, you recall the memory, it feels real. But when you visit a memory, you're vis visiting Memorex, something that used to be. You'll act from it as if it's true because you go in to what I would call is kind of like a state of hypnosis. It's a trance. So memories are not real. They're just written cells, information on the cells of your brain. It wrote down, uh, stored what you felt at that time. Now, again, you can adjust that and make it bad or good. All right. Memories are not real. It just captures experiences and ideas and concepts, and it adds the sensations to the, the memory and when you recall it, it feels real today, all right? The unconscious, subconscious, limbic operating system is what we would call an intelligent idiot. Now, when I say that, it doesn't, whenever you experience a childhood experience, bad or good, it doesn't say it's bad or good. It says, this is what is. So if you were born in an environment where your brother tries to kill you, push you, punish you, torment you, it writes it in there. And it will reuse it as if it's a good thing. If you watch a scary movie, that scary movie goes in, the intelligent idiot records it, replays it, and it, it shows up at a place that you thought is very inappropriate and you're super scared because it's intelligent idiot. It doesn't say it's bad or good. It just replicates, gives right back to you what went in. So you teach the intelligent idiot how to cut things up. It'll cut everything in front of it until it figures out you shouldn't be cutting it, you know? It's like my little baby, Matthew, when he was a little kid, you know, he's curly headed, black hair, crawling around the floor and he's munching on something. I pull it, put my finger in there and pull it out. And it was a June bug. And he cried because he was enjoying it. And I took it from him. You know, he didn't know any better. And if I didn't do that, unless somebody else impresses upon him, June bugs are not good to eat. He would grow up, be having June bug sandwiches today. 
But culturally, that's just not appropriate. So therefore, the intelligent idiot replicates, right? All right. Now, the weird thing about your your limbic system, your subconscious system, it always recycles whatever you hold. That means, I'm telling you what, and I know my practitioner will tell you, when I'm working with clients, today's problems is a replication of their childhood earlier experiences. It just keeps recycling the same experiences and emotions over and over again. It just recycles them. So that means whatever's in there, the bad, the good, or the ugly, it'll reuse it on you. Now, if you don't like the bad or the ugly, then you have to be taking full responsibility of that and adjust those memories. If you have skills, then the coast force people don't. Uh, Another thing is um, uh, the memories inside your head. All memories are designed not for actual fact, but for survival. It is designed to keep you alive. It's designed to keep you in your place. If you're the victim of the family, this survival system will make sure every relationship, everywhere you go, you're the victim because this is survival. You learn that this is the best way to survive. Now, if your survival skill is fighting and anger and bitterness, your your brain will use that and you will continue using that until uh, it either destroys you and you stay safe based on that misery. All right. So memories are for si- survival skills, for survival, not factual information. Now, there could be some factual stuff and there could be a lot of, um, you know, false stuff. But to us, it seems real. Now, how many times I've actually worked with people? When I'm dealing with a memory when they was a child and they actually didn't have a memory of it until their mom told them a memory of it. They created a memory of it and now it becomes a real memory. I worked with someone whose whose brother was beat up and tied to a tree. But what her memory is, is he comes into the kitchen. He tells a story. But when I was working on her in her memory, she was watching him being beat by the tree. She never was there. And there's a lot of these emotions there. So again, memories are oftentimes borrowed. Most memories are borrowed. We we watch a movie. You watch a movie, and next thing you know, you got a fear of sharks, or you got a fear of spiders, or the fear of some child. You're you're going to be raped or killed or murdered or something. We borrow from our experiences. Memories are borrowed when your mom tells you a story. You tell the story, you create the memory as if it was true. Another thing about memories. When you have a dream, dreams aren't real. But when you wake up, you're sweating, you're tossing your head back and forth. It can't be real. It can't be real. But it felt real. That's a borrowed false memory. And we build from those. All right. Memories. Most memories are borrowed. We borrow it from TV. We borrow it from a dream. We borrow it from a mom or a dad. Or we learn by listening to stories. All right. Next is. In your memories, in your memories, everything in your memories is yourself. It's all you. When you recall a memory of your dad beating you, your dad's dead and gone, and you recall the memory and you feel like you're being beaten, who's beating you? It's you. Every person in your memory is yourself. It's all you. These are factual. And you think about it. You're, the, you're the, the movie director. You're all actors in your memory. And when you discover you can change that, you can change your whole world. All right? There's five types of basic memories. Five types. We have visual memory. We have auditory memory. We have kinesthetic memory. And we also have taste and smell memory. Sometimes people say, I have this problem, but I have no memory of it. I said, well, how do you know you have a problem? She says, I feel it. A feeling is a memory. We call it a metaphoric expression of real events. So there's five types of memories. Knowing how to change all types sets you free. That makes sense? All types of memories. Some people have very strong kinesthetic memories. They don't have picture memories. I don't have strong visual memories. I have have knowings. I have... um, Feelings, auditory, you know, smell and taste, some, um, you know. All right. All right. The mind is written on the brain. 
The mind is written on the brain. So the brain actually is the physical construction. The brain is where all the information is put. That means every sound, every visual, every kinesthetic is written on the brain. We create a mind. That's the conscious construction. That's what you think with. So, for example, you know, I'm talking to Marianne and she went and saw her friend Susan. And Marianne said, I had a nightmare and dogs was in my nightmares. And her friend Sue, she goes, well, obviously, if dogs are in your nightmare, you better be aware there's a dog that's going to get you. So consciously, you're thinking from logic conscious consciousness. And then you start thinking, oh, my God, dogs are out to get me. And you consciously start making up fears around dogs. The mind will create stories. Mind will put things together. Mind will ask what you call um, not so good questions like what's wrong with me? Why don't dogs like me? What bad things can happen in the future? And and the uh, weird thing is, is the brain with all the information will start giving the mind answers. It'll create answers for them. Even if it's weird, it will. So the mind is what we think with and we create from. We think that our logical understanding, like that little 15-year-old kid that came to see me. Now, her dad was there. Her dad says, well, I tell her it's not a big deal. I tell her this, I tell her that, and I tell her this. And, and you did it, but you know what the difference is? Logic doesn't solve the limbic operating recordings on the brain. Logic doesn't fix that. Logically, every one of you know this is a fact. Do you know that the past is over? Everybody will say yes, right? Do you know you're not a child anymore? But what happens when a memory pops in and it feels real today? Your mind goes, oh, my God, it feels real. So the, the mind and the brain are different. The brain is a physical operating system within the mind and the body. The mind creates a gener gener generalized information, content that's written on the cortices. So to change your mind is to change your direction. To change your brain is to change your life. And it'll all, it'll all stick. All right. First of all, the next one, the past cannot be changed. The past, your past cannot be changed because you can't change something that doesn't exist. You can't undo being born. You can't undo what happened. It's over. You can't go back and change that. But what you can change are memories. How you personally represent memories. If you change the memories about the past, you change your memories in your brain. You also change what your brain will give to you again. If you change them all to good, you get more. If you more good, if you change all your good memories to bad, you get more bad. So memory, the past cannot be changed, but memories can be changed, and they do every time you visit. The last one is all problems are metaphoric expressions. Today you have a problem with somebody or something. That something or that person is a, an expression of previous experiences. Other people, other events of your past distorts what's happening today. So it means all problems are metaphoric expressions of unresolved and or resolved emotional experience of the past. Sometimes memories are known and unknown. There's a lot of, and a lot of people don't realize, and I hear this say all the time, I don't remember much of my childhood and you know what I say? Congratulations, you're part of the planet. You know, and you think about it, you know, you, you know, definitely Rebecca's childhood is way over and Nurse Sandy is way over and mine too. A majority of your whole life, you have no conscious recall. None. Almost hardly any. You may have, if you probably count on your hands, you probably could call up maybe 50 or 100 memories if you're lucky. You know? Most of our past is gone. Our consciousness is not as smart as a great unconscious limbic operating system. So you have to understand some of the key points that I want to make that a lot of times our problems are borrowed from other people. We learn to have problems by watching other people have it. Uh, limbic system is a synonym for subconscious and unconscious. Memories change every time you visit it. Good for bad, bad for good. Memories are not real. They're just creations inside the mind. And when you visit, the mind makes it seem real. I say the mind, the brain makes it seem real in the body. 
The subconscious that tells you the idiot. It just replicates. It doesn't say if it's good or bad. Uh, subconscious recycles all your memories. That means every memory you hold, you'll re-experience again. That's why you change all the bad ones. Keep all the good ones. Memories are for survival, not for facts. Most memories are borrowed from other people. Everything inside your mind is you. Everything inside your mind is yourself. So if you have memories of being beaten, raped, or abused by somebody, who's holding the memory? When you visit the memory, who's experiencing the memory? You. It's all you. You change that. You change everything about yourself. Five types of memory. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, taste, and smell. The mind is written on the brain. The mind is a creation of the content written on the brain. You change the brain's content, the mind will shift and change its value and identity. The past can't be changed because you can't change something that doesn't exist anymore. But you can change your memories about the past, therefore you change yourself. All problems are metaphoric expressions. They're all metaphors of previous experiences combined and put together. Guys, do you remember? Do you remember the very first time you sat in a car and you got to learn how to drive? Do you remember how complex that is? You know, you got three pedals in the floor. <laughs> you got three. Oh, man, that's so complex. And one of them, if you don't let out just right, it jerks around, dies. Do you realize that? Do you realize there's a lot of complexity in knowing how to drive? But today, you jump in a car and you just drive. That's a metaphoric expression of all those experiences. You don't even think about driving. You just jump in and go. You put your makeup on Trisky, you brush your teeth, you talk on the phone, you, you eat your sandwich. And this great mind of yours still gets you to wherever you're going. All right. Does that kind of make sense about memories in the mind? Good stuff?